Well, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Morning. Am I coming through? Yes, I am. Good morning. Welcome to worship uh, this morning. It's great to be able to gather together. And if you're visiting, you're very welcome. My name's Kevin, and I'm the pastor here. And I'll be uh, leading our service uh, this morning. Uh, Just as a heads up, uh, over this August period, there isn't any children's work uh, going on. But down on the right-hand side, uh, particularly, I'll uh, flag it up halfway through the service. There's a point where it makes sense for the children to engage with it. But if I lose them before that time... They're very welcome to come over here, grab some sheets, quizzes. Uh, Adults, try and hold out a bit longer, okay? If you can do that for me, that would be great. Uh, And if you need to use the crash room, then in behind this wall, uh, there's a a room with uh, the various toys that they're welcome to play with, uh, and uh, the services stream through into there so you can still hear uh, what is going on. Uh, So please use the space as is most helpful to you to enable uh, everyone to to worship well together today. I'm going to start by uh, reading some words from Psalm 100, and then we'll sing together. Psalm 100 says, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. So enter his gates with thanksgiving, and enter his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that we're able to gather together, whether online or in this space, to worship you. We thank you for the songs which we can sing uh, joyfully to you. We thank you for remembering who you are and that you are the creator of all. And we thank you for the freedom we have to gather in this place this morning. So by your Holy Spirit, help us to worship you and to bring praise to your name. And we pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, if you're able, do stand with me as we sing together. Thank you, John. Praise to the Lord.
Lord, we thank you that you are an ever-present help. We thank you that you are the Lord of creation. We thank you that you have been with us in all that we've been going through, whether that has been going well or, Lord, it's felt like we've been drudging through the hardest of times. We thank you that we have so many reasons to bless you and to praise your name. And so we continue to join with the psalmist with our next song, singing of those 10,000 reasons for our hearts find to praise you. Let's continue to sing. sit down let's pray
Lord, we want to thank you in this place today that you have revealed to us, Jesus. We want to thank you for his goodness, for his love, for his compassion for all of mankind. Thank you that he was one who didn't think of himself, but thought of others above all else, who gave of himself upon that cross so that all who believe might find life in him that might be forgiven for the sin that we so normally in everyday life commit. Lord, forgive us for our selfish, independent natures, for those things we've done in thought, word or deed that don't align with what you have asked of us. And just in a moment of pause, I invite you in your heart to offer to God anything that you need to say sorry for today. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love poured out on the cross because nothing we have done can ever resolve that sin problem. But everything you have done brings us into new relationship with Father, declares over us that we are forgiven, that we are restored, that we are known and held safe in his hands. And so, Lord, as we continue to worship you in this place, we ask that you would make those truths known in our lives. Help us to know that we are blessed by you. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, yesterday we uh, went for a little wander around a place called All Things Wild. Anyone heard of this place? William has, he has, yes, okay. Anyone? <laughs> No? Oh, we've got two people. Excellent. Okay. Well, all Things Wild is uh, got, uh, as you'd imagine, uh, all sorts of animals uh, kicking around the, the uh, what is not a zoo, but is not a farm. Okay? It's something in between. And if you fancy a nice day out, then it's somewhere to go uh, down in uh, Gloucestershire. Uh, and what I'm saying this is because I'm wondering what animals are your favourite type of animal? Okay, what animal is your favourite type of animal? And in, in a short sentence, why? Okay, who's going to help me out with this? I've got a microphone, so we can uh, hear what you've got to say. Who's got a favourite animal and why? William, you're going to start us off. You're going to start us off. Talk to me. Yes or no? No. Okay. Yes, we have a volunteer. <laughs> Do you want to come up the front? Then everyone can see you. That would be even easier for me. Look at that. Wonderful. Look at this. A giraffe. What's your favourite animal? A giraffe. A giraffe. Why do you like giraffes? Because they're big. They are big, aren't they? How tall are they? Are they this tall? No. This tall? No. This tall? No, higher. Like to the ceiling tall. Yeah, wonderful. Giraffes, fantastic. Thank you very much. Okay. What else we got? We've got any other animals? Adults, you can join in too. You can have favourite animals, surely. Thank you, Laura. Oh, yep, I'll come back. There we go. Yeah, a lion. A lion? Yes, because it's our king of kings and lord of lords. King of kings, lord of lords, absolutely. Thank you. You don't get a clap, apparently, but there we go. Hi, what's yours? Owls. Owls? Why is an owl? They just owl? look very peaceful and very content with life. I think owls look sinister. <laughs> so I'm loving that. I've got to change I my view there. Owls. You love owls. Yeah. No, I, I just think they're kind of watching you and you're never quite sure where... That's great. Margaret? A cat every time. Why? Affectionate. Oh, lovely. Yeah, they're comforting. They're lovely. They're good companions. They're lovely. Sales pitch for cats going on here. Okay. Uh, Amanda, you're going to second this one? Yes. Cats, intuitive, loving, and loyal. Intuitive, loyal, loving, and loyal. Yeah, Malena, what, what have you got for us? Um, flamingo. Oh, why do you like the flamingo? 
Because they're pink. They are, aren't they? A lovely colour. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, John, coming over to you. There you go. Thank you. I have to put one up for dogs because cats probably make a pro really poor guides. No. And I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but my favourite animal is a bull because I love a good burger. I mean, if anyone was going to offer an alternate view. That's it, OK. Uh, Molly, if there's anyone online, I'll come back to the messages in a moment. So. I like tigers. Why do you like tigers? I really like them. Perfect. <laughs> Just because I do, Dad, why are you asking? I got that look, didn't I? There we go. OK. Let's see, did anyone, no one online likes any animals. It's all good. So, no problems. Uh, animals are featured a lot in the Bible. Uh, if you didn't know, try reading the Bible with that lens on and see how many animals uh, you spot. Maybe one day we'll do a, a quiz on it. But we're going to sing a song, uh, a newer song to us, but it's been around for a bit. Um, and it speaks about worshipping the Lamb. Now, let me read you something from the Bible first, and then let me explain what this is about. So... I'm going to read you some verses from uh, Revelation, which is the last book in the Bible, and I'm reading in chapter 7 from verse 9, and it says this. After this, I looked. This is John having a vision, uh, which God is giving him. I had looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing round the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honour and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lara mentioned to us the lion. The lion is a name or a, a description that uh, Jesus is associated with in the Bible. But another prominent one is the lamb. The lamb who gave his life. The lamb which was used as part of temple worship as a sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins. And so Jesus, they look at Jesus and they say what he did on the cross is exactly what the lamb was doing when we were practicing that worship in the temple. But we no longer need to practice that worship in the temple because Jesus has done it once and for all. He is the Lamb of God, the one who takes away the sins of the world. And I say this because we often hear us in songs that we, we come up with the Lamb, we sing worship to the Lamb. And it's good for us to know that when we're singing that, we're worshiping Jesus. And that's what this next song uh, speaks about, bringing praise to the Lamb who is lifted high. And so what we're going to do is we're going to sing you, as usual, the first verse, uh, pre-chorus and chorus, as is the way with songs these days. Um, and then we'll go back to the beginning, and if you know it already, you're welcome to join in, and we'll sing the song through. It's fairly easy to, to pick up. Uh, you can stand in a moment once we've started. So, John, would you like to get us going, and then we'll sing this together. We sing together. A thousand generations Your name is the highest. Your name. 
to the beginning if you want to stand with us if you're able as we sing together and it follows those three different melodies all the way through the song we sing together a thousand generations a thousand generations
thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we will stand one day with all of the saints in glory. That all those who trust in you, Lord Jesus, the Lamb and the Lion, Lord, will find themselves bowing before you, singing praise to your name. With all those who have come before, with all those who will follow. Thank you, Lord, that we will join with your created creatures. Thank you that all of creation cries out for your glory. And as we continue to worship you in this place, Lord, we we know that truth, that we are held safe by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, now and forever. Amen. Please uh, be seated. And Trevor, would you like to come and give us a, uh, a, pre- a I was going to say a preview, but a review of what's been happening this week? Hello. Well, if you weren't here on Tuesday, you missed a treat because we had 24 guests for holiday at home, which has become like an, an annual thing now in the middle of some holidays. Very important for those who've found that uh, everything stops in July and doesn't start again until September. Then there's a big gap in the middle when things happen. So, started by Alan and Margot many years ago and still going. Um, Bit different format this year. We started at 10.30 and as people arrived, they had the inevitable coffee and cake and biscuits and tea endlessly going on. And then we did crafts all morning, including uh, making little jewellery boxes. Uh, we have got some pictures which we'll put on the Castle Hill website. Yeah. Um, um, and for the gents, we, we did the same boxes, but we tried to make it a bit more rustic with lolly sticks stuck on. So they painted, glittered, added buttons, all sorts of things. And then we did scraper boards, which start off looking like one picture and end up looking like something totally different. Um, and then we did Taylor Swift. We were very trendy and down with the kids. We did Taylor Swift um, friendship bracelets and ran out of time before lunch. We've got loads of other craft activities, but we ran out of time. Um, lunch was fish and chips out of the paper, well, out of takeaway trays, with uh, ice cream on a stick to follow. And then in the afternoon, we did lots of silly games and activities. So we used the lounge in the morning, gateway at lunchtime, and this room in the afternoon. Uh, We did uh, a four-way rotation of activities, including archery, very competitive, some other people. Um, In fact, some of them remembered how archery from last year and were determined to do even better this year. Um, We did giant noughts and crosses down here, construction toys over here, and shove halfpenny in the foyer. So we pretty well used the whole building. And then we did a a very ridiculous game called Mr. and Mrs. Wright Have a Day Out uh, when they had eight jester's hats, which they had to pass left or right according to the story. There were 22 rights and 17 lefts. And yeah, it needed to be videoed really to believe it. There you go. Um, And then a general knowledge quiz and they had to get the questions right before they were allowed more tea and cake and coffee before they went home. Um, I just wanted to say a big thank you to um, Helen Wilson, Margot's daughter, who came in at the last moment. We were expecting that uh, Margot wouldn't be able to come because uh, she was going for a cataract operation on Monday at the last minute, and then it got changed. So she was able to come, but Helen was already coming. So Helen took over where Alan left off, and we had uh, Sarah and uh, here and we had um, Kai, our grandson, who happened to be up from Wales, and the usual team of Margot, myself, and Lindsay. It was lovely to welcome Billy Lowe and her daughter Donna, and thank you to Kiva for bringing John over so that he could take part as well. So, a uh, beautiful piece of teamwork, all working for the same end, um, deliver- and it was worth all the effort of shopping and preparing and serving and delivering and clearing up. Um, but we know it was appreciated by those who came. The Cameo programme for the autumn term is um, flexible at the moment. 
but we start again on the 17th of September. And everybody's welcome. You don't have to be retired. You don't have to be on your own. Cameo's open to everybody. Come and meet each other. Um, and I'd, there's also um, a notice for if you're interested in the National Memorial Arboretum, there's a trip going from this area on the 19th of September. If you'd be interested in that, let me know. But thank you to all those who took part. Thanks, Trevor. Just a couple of other things to uh, flag up. Um, uh, we're interested to know if uh, any ages are interested in playing in a cricket game. Okay, this is a putting a feelers out to see if this is viable type message. It's in the newsletter, so respond to what the newsletter says, uh, and, uh, but Joey is your man to uh, head for if you want to speak to him today. Uh, on Monday, uh, there isn't any home from home, um, uh, but we're always interested in those within inside the church who are happy to support us and help with the leadership or just help on the day. Um, and even if you can only do one every now and again, uh, then we'd welcome you to come and have a chat with me about that. Um, it's just a social space to enable people to meet together, uh, games and all sorts of stuff available if you want. But that's not on this Monday as it's bank holiday. Uh, thanks to all those uh, with children who have responded to the consent uh, message sent out. Uh, and if you haven't, then uh, just a flag up that it's in your email somewhere. And if you could, that would be really great. Uh, and then finally, um, some of you will know uh, Doreen Strudwick. And uh, Margaret's asked me to share that she's now moving on to uh, North Wales with her family. Uh, and so uh, we'd like to send her a card, if you know her, just to say thank you. And Margaret's placed that in the foyer. Uh, and so if you can do that today, that would be really great. Just pop your name in there. Um, and that would be a really lovely thing to, to let her know that we're still remembering her uh, even after this number of years. Um, I think that covers all that I need to say on that front. Uh, finally, just to remind uh, our children and young people, so uh, there is the crash room behind this wall, and uh, we've got the various sheets which have already been uh, gobbled up on the side here, uh, but there's more in the blue folder if you need them, and there's hard card there to lean on if you need it as well. Uh, so please help yourself uh, to do that. Uh, they are all Bible-based, uh, so do engage with them as well. They do link with what we're talking about today. And that is going to be to continue following uh, the story of David. Uh, and so if you uh, weren't with us last week, uh, we were introduced to David. We met uh, David in 1 Samuel 16. And we're going to continue to uh, see what happens in the life of David. And uh, John's going to come and read this passage for us. Uh, but in your Bibles, you're looking for 1 Samuel in the Old Testament, chapter 16. And we're going to be starting at verse 14. Feel free to use an app if that's uh, better for you. And we'll just give you a minute to find that. It's on page 287 in the Church Bibles. 1 Samuel chapter 16 and beginning at verse 14. Now the spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. Saul's attendant said to him, See, an evil spirit from God is tormenting you. Let our Lord command his servants here to search for someone who can play the harp. He will play when the evil spirit from God comes upon you, and you will feel better. So Saul said to his attendants, Find someone who, will, who plays well and bring him to me. One of the servants answered, I have seen a son of Jesse of Bethlehem who knows how to play the harp. He is a brave man and a warrior. He speaks well and is a fine looking man. And the Lord is with him. Then Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, Send me your son David, who is with, his, with the sheep. So Jesse took a donkey loaded with bread, a skin of wine, and a young goat, and sent them with his son David to Saul. David came to Saul and entered his service. Saul liked him very much, and David became one of his armour-bearers. 
Then Saul sent word to Jesse, saying, Allow David to remain in my service, for I am pleased with him. Whenever the Spirit from God came upon Saul, David would take his harp and play. Then relief would come to Saul. He would feel better, and the evil spirit would leave him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that as Kevin brings your word this morning, that you will speak to us through this passage, that, Lord, we will know the message that you have for us today and that we will apply it in our lives. Lord, we thank you for your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. I wonder how many of you saw an article this week about cucumbers. Didn't expect that, did you? You see an article about cucumbers? Joe, you seen that one? Yeah, Kerry, you seen this one too? Well, if you haven't, let me give you the headline that it said. It said this. This was on, from the BBC's take on it. Uh, Icelandic supermarkets have been left in a bit of a pickle after a viral TikTok trend saw an unprecedented surge in demand for cucumbers, leaving suppliers racing to keep up. It comes after social media influencer, influencers in the small Nordic country began sharing a salad recipe of grated cucumbers, sesame oil, garlic, rice vinegar and chilli oil. Did you get that down? Or just, do you want me to do that again? The trend started in Canada, where a TikToker, now dubbed, I would say fairly, uh, uh, basically, uh, cucumber guy, <laughs> has been sharing novel cucumber recipes every day since July to his 5.5 million followers. 5.5 million followers and a cucumber recipe. Isn't it amazing the power people have to shape what we do? The ordinary guy has got excited by cucumbers, of all things. Nice job, William. Keep going and creating videos which are proudly shaping the actions of many and the supply chain in a country which is over 2,700 miles away. It's quite impressive, isn't it? And in our passage today, we are shown how God is shaping the lives of King Saul and a little-known shepherd boy called David. You see, Saul had been appointed Israel's first king after the people rejected God because they wanted to be like the surrounding nations. And as Samuel anointed Saul, we're told God gave Saul a new heart and his spirit came upon him. So Saul was perfectly shaped to set the bar high as to what it meant to lead God's people in his ways. But, as seems oh so frequent, Saul was more interested in achieving his own ends. And in spite of Samuel's warnings, Saul continued to be disobedient to God's commands. And so God removes his spirit from Saul, taking away all that empowering support he gave him to be king. And then as we heard last week, God then anointed, through Samuel, David instead. But we do have a problem. You see, we still have Saul as king. And David is still this shepherd boy in the middle of nowhere. So how on earth will David rise to the status God has placed on him? And how will he shape their lives for good of those who love him? Well, it's at this point in the story we encounter a verse that might trouble some of us. For in verse 14 it tells us, The spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. 
Now, there is, I must tell you, much debate around the word evil, which is used in our Bibles here. Indeed, you'll see on the bottom of your own Bible, if you're using the church one, it references that there are other words that could be used, which include harmful or a, a spirit of distress. And they don't do this to try and avoid an awkward conversation, though I would appreciate that from time to time. Uh, But they do it because they feel these words carry a better sense of what the original word might have meant. But even if we're to accept it, as our Bibles say, the implication is the same. As God removes his spiritual protection from Saul, there is a new problem that God can use David to solve. For once the spirit of the Lord has departed, Saul is left with a spiritual hole into which a distressing or harmful spirit comes to cause him great trouble. But then what do we do with this idea that the spirit came from the Lord? Well, let me offer you uh, two thoughts, and I could offer you many more. But firstly, we have to remember that if we're declaring that God is sovereign, then he must reign over all things. Not just most things. And that, as confusing as it may seem, includes the power of evil. And whilst then that statement raises a whole load of other questions that you may want to ask me that we've not got time for today, we do see this truth affirmed when we look at the ministry of Jesus and the power he had over evil there. Second, it's good to remember that there are two senses in which God may send something. There's an active sense or there's a passive sense. So actively, we know that God never initiates or performs evil. James chapter 1 verse 17 tells us he's the father of lights in whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. But in a passive sense, God may withdraw his hand of protection and therefore allow evil to come without being the source of the evil itself and use it for his plan. And this, I want to suggest, is what happens to Saul. He was so very proud and rebellious against God, resisting the Holy Spirit's anointing in his life and telling him to to effectively go away so many times that God finally gives Saul what he wants. And once the Spirit of the Lord has departed from Saul, Satan was more than ready to send a distressing spirit to fill the void. And it seems like we read in the book of Job, that God allows for this to happen. You see, Saul was only interested in being shaped by one person, himself. He knew best. He wanted all the glory. And even when God challenged him about his actions, Saul sought to cover them up by falsely claiming he had been doing, being disobedient to enable his people to better worship God. <laughs> so sadly, sometimes, we have to give people what they want. And whilst we may want to keep intervening to protect them, parents do this quite often, At some point, the only way we can hope that someone will learn is to allow them to get the very thing they desire and its consequences. Jesus' parable of the prodigal son is an example of this, as is Paul's stern rebuke to the church in Corinth to expel the man living in sinful behaviour. And chapter 5 of 1 Corinthians tells us, by handing this man over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh so that his spirit may be saved on the day of the Lord. For each of these people, Saul, the prodigal son and the sinful man, they seem to think that they will live a freer life without the spirit of the Lord bugging them, making them aware that they've really got selfish desires and that their actions are leading them against the Lord. But in reality, they actually leave themselves open 
to the influence of a much more distressing spirit that leads them into deeper eternal trouble. Hebrews 10 verse 26 offers us, offers us this very sobering warning. Should we choose to be shaped by the world rather than God's ways? For if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of truth, that is, if we understand God's word, but then we just choose not to live it out, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a fearful expectation of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the enemies of God. But in the face of this, there is always a way back to God. For we've already sung, the Lord is patient, slow to anger and abounding in love, longing for all who are lost to repent and return to him. For Saul, God uses the attendants to bring David into his court as a gift of grace, bringing him relief and the opportunity to repent and be restored. For whilst God is judging Saul for his sin and allowing him to be tormented, he does this in the hope that his hardened heart will be corrected as he's allowed to see the damage of getting what he wants. Sadly, as we'll see, the rest of Saul's life shows that he continues to reject God's correction and instead seeks to shape his life around his own ego, desires and values. Before the evil spirit tormented him, within Saul there was fear, paranoia, jealousy and violent rage. But the spirit of God was with him. And so it seems those impulses were largely kept at bay. But without the spirit of God, Saul gets worse and worse. And when the evil spirit torments him and he eventually realises David is God's anointed, Saul loses all rational control. And friends, we need to be aware and make sure that we don't make the same mistakes. If God brings or allows us to face situations in which we receive correction, let us respond in repentance to them right away. If we're suppressing the gift of the Holy Spirit in our lives, let us repent today and allow him to shape us for his glory. For whilst as followers of Jesus, we do not need to fear that God will take his Holy Spirit from us. For he has promised this gift as a continual presence in our lives to lead and to guide us in all we do. We can so easily choose not to listen and to reject his counsel. We can so easily neglect taking the time to spend with God allowing other things of this world to shape us rather than seeking to grow in hearing the voice of the Lord and allowing him to shape us more like his son. Now as part of this plan, we're told that God uses David's gift of music to ease Saul's suffering. And so as David plays his guitar-like instrument, don't think of a harp like this, we're told it's more like this. And he likely sings too. We see he brings order to the chaos in Saul's mind. He brings healing to his emotional well-being. And he is made physically better too. Today we would label this kind of thing music therapy. As music is used to aid the healing process and interact with parts of ourselves that words cannot always reach. In my former life, uh, I joined a brass group which used to visit schools, and one of the schools we went to was a special needs school. And initially, after playing a couple of uh, lively pieces of music, which the staff clearly enjoyed, uh, we then went around to each of the children individually and allowed them to touch our instruments whilst we played. And I still remember how one child suddenly came to life as we did this with his hand having been placed for him on top of the instrument, his carer told us he suddenly responded in a way that he had not done in the whole time she had ever looked after him. Such was the power of music speaking into his soul. 
And it seems to me that for Saul, the same thing is happening. Whether David was singing about the Lord or just playing music with no words, this gift speaks to Saul's whole being, his body, mind, and spirit. And of course, the spirit wouldn't like that, and so would leave. And whilst there's nothing in our text today to say that David sang songs about God, being the prolific writer of worship songs we know that he is, having been recorded in the Psalms, it would make sense to me that the songs he played, at least some of them, help shape Saul's mind to the things of God. And that reminds me of a verse from Romans 12, which talks about allowing what, what we allow to shape our minds. In verse 2 it says this, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Friends, we are being shaped all the time by the things we allow to influence us. Iceland had a run on cucumbers because someone on social media told them about a cucumber recipe. How much more the lyrics that we idly allow to go into our minds each day. Of the views of radio presenters we just allow to be playing in the background. Of the books that we choose to read. Of the news articles we consume. Of even the influence of our friends. I'm certainly not saying we should reject secular content outright. But we need to be discerning about what we allow into our minds that inevitably shapes us. And we need to ensure that the content we consume from Christian sources is equally as edifying to our Lord. And this matters all the more when we're facing times of trial. Whether from within or without, whether from the Lord or elsewhere, what songs Poems, Bible verses, do we have access to that we know so well that we can call on that will help shape our minds like David helped to shape Saul's? What regular Christian support do we have that can speak the truths we need to hear or be the encouragement we need when times are tough? And again, I'm not saying every part of that needs to be explicitly Christian. There are all sorts of secular songs and pieces of music that reflect the truth we find in scripture. Similarly, there's all sorts of genres of music that speak to us in ways that words cannot. Let alone if we widened it out to all sorts of art forms too. But what I am saying is we need to be discerning about what and whom is shaping our minds. And perhaps that means there are things that we need to change to ensure our lives are shaped in godly ways. You see, David was given to Saul as a gift of grace to help in times of trouble. And yes, this was a unique situation as God's sovereign plan continued to unfold, but there are still lessons here that we can take away as we seek to follow Jesus. For if Jesus isn't seeking, if Jesus isn't shaping our thoughts, then someone else is. And if we aren't living for him, then we're going to be living for our own glory. And so I want to invite us today to take a moment to evaluate our own lives. The things that maybe need to be removed, but also maybe the things that are so positive and need to be celebrated. And I pray that the Lord will show us how we need to redress the balance, ensuring that his word, his son, his spirit are the main priority in how our minds are shaped for his glory. Throughout worship, we've been singing songs that are actually mainly influenced by the words found in the Psalms, or as we had that new song in Revelation. And in a moment, we're going to sing uh, two more songs, both as a reminder of God's truths 
and as an act of worship. But before we do that, let's take a moment to be still. And let me pray as we do that. Father God, we've heard your word spoken to us. Lord, we've heard Kevin's interpretation of your word. And now we wait on your Holy Spirit to speak to us today in how you want us to respond. And Lord, if there's anything that I've said that is not of you, Lord, would you just let that fall away from the people who are hearing this right now. But Lord, if there's something I've said which is a truth which needs to stand firm, would you help it to remain, even if it's a challenge in our hearts? So Lord, help us to know what is shaping us today. Gracious God, would you help us to live in this world, but not to be of this world? Would you help us to be bold and courageous in seeking to live for you wherever you take us and in whatever you ask us to do? And would you help us to know what those sources of music are, whatever that is for us, that speaks truth and renewal in our hearts, particularly for those days where we feel low and worn out and can't see the next step. May your truth speak to us through those gifted artists to keep us keeping our eyes fixed on you and to bring glory to your name. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. John, let's just, uh, let's just sing Psalm 23, shall we? Let's just sing that one. If you want to uh, do stand, if you would uh, like to be prayed for during this song, uh, then feel free to come forwards and uh, we will happily pray for you about something God's laid on your heart. Uh, But let's sing the words of Psalm 23 together. Thanks.
Amen. Do sit down. And Joy, would you mind passing your mic to John? Um, And John's going to lead us in a time of intercessions. Thank you. So, Heavenly Father, we just praise and thank you that we can come before your throne of grace at time of need. And we're just so aware that our world and our country and our town and our church is full of broken people. We thank you that there is hope on the horizon for developments like a possible cure or significant treatment for type 1 diabetes. We thank you also, Lord, that you move your hand over troubled spots in the world like Ukraine, Russia, like uh, Israel and Gaza. And we praise and thank you, Lord, that none of these developments could happen unless you allowed them for your great high purposes. So we just pray, Lord, that for all involved that know you, that they would see your hand moving in and over those situations for your praise and glory. And moving closer to home, Lord, we just think of the American election coming down the line in November and there is so much personal mudslinging that goes on and so much struggle in that lost nation of America and we just really pray for your spirit of wisdom and guidance for all involved that they might be able to see and find and follow their way back to you and Lord we're so mindful that our own election was not that long ago and yet the new government is struggling to pick up the pieces left by the old one but also trying to make its mark with issues like the uh, winter fuel payments for older people and lord we know that your will is not that people should be left in need so we just ask that you would guide our government to understand underspends understand how and where things can be put right so that people's experience of living can be improved and the poor made rich but maybe not in financial terms but through discovering you and lastly we come to our own church and to ourselves and you know the fact that we've just had holiday at home is perhaps an indication that not everyone can get away And we just really pray that before the new kind of school term takes off and before we move from the summer such as we've had into autumn, Lord, there are people so, so struggling, Lord, that need to know you walking through that valley of shadow. So we just really pray that they would feel your presence at the moment. And Lord, we just also pray that as we... Um, approach the new term that we'll still be able to find those spare moments of times of refreshing from you that come with just being in silence and letting you be our confidence but also that come from times of repentance Lord so that we can start this new season afresh for you so we just pray all these prayers Lord and can we just end in the Lord's prayer so in whatever way and whatever words mean most to you. So, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you, John. As our worship draws to a close, we're going to finish with some more words which are biblically based from the psalmist, which speaks about how God is our strength and refuge. And so if you're able, uh, do stand with me as we proclaim these together. Thanks, John.
So wherever you go this week and in whatever you do, may you know that the Lord of hosts has gone before you, that he is with you, that he is watching over you. May you keep your eyes firmly fixed on the Lord Jesus, who will guide you and who will help you. And may you spend time resting in the Spirit's work in your life. May you give thanks for all he does. And may all glory go to his name. Amen. If you'd like prayer about anything that we've been talking about in the service or indeed anything else, then uh, please head over to the Dove Painting side over there and there's a team who will meet with you and will pray with you about anything. Otherwise, do hang around and share with us in refreshments and get to know one another each other. Next week is an all-age service as we continue in 1 Samuel. We'll see you then.